Hey Gabriele, how are you doing? Hi Cristina, fine, thank you. You? I'm fine, thank you. A bit tired. Yesterday I was to see a gig, so oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what did you see? What? What did you see? Uh there were three bands. Uh, uh the first one was really good. It was a um metalcore band uh, uh, named uh, Split Iris. The mm -hmm. second one also was metalcore. It was uh, Balance Breach. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there was another band that had a lot of uh, different influences. It was a mix with uh, rap and death metal and uh, all those mm -hmm. things. It, it was interesting. And I cannot remember the name at the moment. <laughs> Oh wow! Well, uh, well, I met it was Chrome, Chrome, something, some Chrome. Oh, wow. I don't know, but they were all good, so it oh, it was great. nice gig. Great to know. Yeah, but uh, let's talk about you. You oh, are yes. uh, <laughs> a multi instrumentalist. Uh, yeah. How many instruments are you able to play? Oh well, <laughs> my main instrument is the guitar. And uh, beside that, uh, I also play the bass, I play piano, I play the Chapman stick, which is a strange instrument, which is a combination of guitar and bass in the same neck. And uh, I play saxophone and, uh, well, I try to sing. Uh, I have a violin, but I cannot play it. <laughs> so did That's you it. study music or uh, did you learn by yourself? Uh, actually, both. Uh, my grandfather was a professional organist, was teacher at the conservatory, and they taught me some basic uh, things about music theory when I was just a kid. And uh, uh, m mostly of the guitar technique is self-taught. So that's it. Uh, I also went uh, in a period of time to some music school, but I, I didn't continue because I wasn't satisfied with what they was explaining. So yes, I have a, uh, more or less, I, I must say that I'm self-taught, but that's it. Yeah. Which one was the first instrument that you, you start to play? Was it guitar? No, actually piano. Okay. Uh, <laughs> And uh, but but then I moved to guitar very very early. I started playing guitar in 1988 and piano just a couple of years before. Uh, yes, and since then, uh, the, again, guitar is my main instrument. The other instruments are for passion and just for for recording my records. Yeah. And talking about your records, you have this uh, one-man band, Golden Seed, yes. Yes. and you released this year your fifth album. What can you tell about the uh, genesis of the album and also about uh, the inspiration and uh, the lyrics that we can find? I think that your music is really interesting and uh, I will, uh, there are a lot of things, a lot of uh, different influences. And I would, uh, I, I don't know, I feel like it's a uh, uh, movie music. It's cinematography. Oh, it could cinematography. be. <laughs> oh, wow, thank you. Uh, well, the, the album is the sixth. Uh, oh, the sixth, album. sorry. <laughs> yes. um, well, the inspiration each time comes from something different. The project is one, but actually every album just uh, depicts the the present moment in which I write the, the music. Uh, and for the last one, uh, which is entitled uh, The Years of Obscurity, the basic idea was uh, was born because I was listening to uh, the records that I made with Karnak, which was my main band uh, uh, in the past years. And there was a period, a period in which we, we made three albums with the uh, with keyboards. There was a, a pianist from our zone, from Gorizia. He was really, he is really, he's still alive. Uh, he's really a genius. And uh, these albums were uh, uh, a lot uh, special to me because of the presence of these keyboards that was, was making 
horrific music. He's a talent in making uh, horror music. No? And uh, the idea, the initial idea for this album was to rescue some of that music because we, we wrote tons and tons of music during the years, but not, uh, not everything was published on a record. And uh, after that, obviously, I, I didn't recycle this music. I just I, I wrote everything from scratch. So this is not cover of Karnak, but it's my music, my original music. But uh, the atmospheres that uh, are uh, in these records uh, are started to resemble that period. So the music is uh, some kind of horrific or... Uh, suitable maybe in some point for uh, for some music uh, for some movie soundtrack as you as you told and uh, yes it's uh, like the other golden seed album it's quite complicated and uh, but the main idea was to to take this uh, horrific uh, uh, atmosphere yeah and uh, beside your uh, golden seed uh, project mm -hmm. You have you are playing and have been playing in several bands, and you did also a lot of collaboration, for example, with uh, Celtic Hills. Yes. <laughs> yes. You, yes. you play yes. the, the guitar in uh, in the song Green Forest. Am I yes. right? Yes. Uh, how, how did it happen to collaborate, for example, with Celtic Hills? Oh, uh, with the with, uh, Celtic Hills uh, happened because I've been knowing Jonathan since many years. He's a good friend. Uh, sometimes we meet to drink a beer and whatever. He's a really nice person. I love it. It's uh, his way of doing the things. And, uh, well, it's so natural. He just asked me to play a couple of, a couple of guitar solos in, in, in his albums. So I, I played... Two guitar solos in the, his latest work, Uldufolk. It's very difficult to say yeah. to me, but <laughs> the last album. And uh, well, maybe I'll do, I will do something uh, also in the next one. Other collaborations, well, I have made a lot of things during the years. Um, in the Golden Seed project, in the third album, I had on the vocals. Uh, uh, Stian Johansen, also known as uh, Cult of Cultus from. He played uh, for a short period with Mayhem. Uh, he, he sang a song on my third album, but we are still in contact. We have some projects ongoing, but they are taking centuries, but uh, uh, it will be done. Maybe I will play the guitar on the next Shadow Dancers uh, uh, album. Uh, maybe we'll come to Italy in, in some week, but let's see. Uh, also, I did a couple of records uh, with the vocals made by Mike Browning from Nocturnus. Um, it was an album, the first one was the album of Celestial Serenity, which is a band, uh, a multicultural band, uh, yeah. um, having musicians from all over the world. I played the Chapman stick there, not the guitar. And there was uh, other guys from Singapore, from Holland, from wherever, and the vocals on this album were made by Mike Browning. With, my Bra with Mike Browning, again, there is another project named, uh, um, let me remember, Sanity Obscure, uh, which again is a, is a death metal band from Singapore, and um, Mike sang on that album, I played the lead guitars. I played the lead guitars on the first album of Gone in April, it's a Canadian band uh, that is making progressive death metal. Uh, now on the bass, they have Steve DiGiorgio. Uh, wow. Well, so <laughs> it's I always arrived just before somebody became famous. No? <laughs> because I didn't play uh, in the first album. Uh, the bassist was uh, Kiko Parisi, which is the bassist uh, of Sadist. Uh, yeah. He played on the first uh, two albums. We remained friends uh, because we, we met... Uh, at that era, and uh, so I had a collaboration also with him, and uh, and also I made uh, some lead guitars from a lot of local bands. They always ask me. I I do it. The uh, I like to do these things. Yeah, do you like just to do uh, like studio 
music so you play on for the album or do you also enjoy live music oh well before uh, when i was in karnak we played uh, almost everywhere in italy and nations around yeah i haven't been playing live since uh, well years now <laughs> because i have no active band actually i played with uh, karnak for about 20 years uh, i played with azure agony which was a um, progressive uh, metal band like Dream Theater or whatever. And uh, I played with a band with Born Again, which was, uh, was a trash metal combo from our zone. But uh, at the moment, yes, I'm not playing live since uh, many yeah. years. But yes, I would like to, to do again some live appearances because yes, I miss it a lot. I yeah. like to do studio works uh, because uh, I can express, I can, it's like painting, uh, it's like paintings, like uh, producing art. Yeah. But uh, the contact with people is something that I really miss. Yeah, that energy that is between the you on yes. the stage and the people that are enjoying that's, the gigs. That's yeah. unreplaceable. Yeah, uh, I, I can figure, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, you also are a digital artist. Yes. You did, uh, for example, your for the Golden Seed, uh, all the artwork. Am I right? Yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. How, I always do that. Yeah. How did you start uh, with this uh, digital art? Oh, well, I've been, I have been the passion of drawing uh, since I was a kid. Uh, I was drawing before the, the, the event of artificial intelligence. I was doing things by hand, by pen. I have a, tons of drawing, drawing monsters, nightmares and whatever, but uh, they are just, uh, I would say, quite childish. Uh, they are, yes, complicated, uh, um, somehow horrific, uh, uh, dark to see, but uh, well, I lack uh, the, the proper technique to do, um, to think of them as a real, uh, pictures, real artworks. Uh, yeah. with, the, with the event of artificial intelligence, I could translate these old drawings in something uh, real, in real images. No? Uh, in fact, I started to do these things with artificial intelligence just by passing my old drawings through the artificial intelligence software. Okay. So I can say it's a 50-50. It's not a completely digital but uh, not completely handmade so also sometimes the artificial intelligence really improved what i what i started with so uh, the, the original drawing was well just a, a draft and uh, seeing it as a final as a final picture is really really interesting also it's very <laughs> wow <laughs> what is very very strange to see yeah. Also lately, I had uh, I've been contacted by an Italian gallerist, so maybe uh, it could happen that I could uh, make an, an exhibition of these pictures. Okay. But we'll see. Right. It's it's a very early stage thing. I don't yeah. I don't know exactly what to say, so but there is this cross thing. for you. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the I want to ask about your the instrument that you have at home how many and what instrument oh. do you do you have do you have ah, well that's a good question actually my house is becoming very little because of the <laughs> quantity of <laughs> instruments that i have i have not as many as jonathan vanderbilt has but uh, he has a, a bigger space than me so <laughs> at the moment i have two pianos uh, i have uh, uh, how many guitars? Ten. Ten guitars, the bass, the Chapman stick, the violin, the saxophone. But uh, in, in every room there is some instruments, except the bathroom. <laughs> but, but maybe uh, there, there should be maybe a whole guitar just in case uh, you have some oh, yeah. inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. In that place, always the better ideas can come out, the people yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it could be could be an idea to have a guitar also also there. Do you have a favorite guitar? Oh uh, yes, but it changes over time. 
Okay. I have um, I have a signature model that is made uh, by a German brand specific uh, by me. It's a, it's a the Gabriele Pala model. Uh, okay. Yes, I can show you. It's here. Yeah. I hope you see the camera, but that is the one you you put in the picture. Yeah. The presentation picture. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yes, it's a it's a very. Oh. It's a very special instrument that uh, is not built uh, out of wood, but uh, out of carbon fiber. And uh, well, it's the quite shape light. Of the uh, the sound is it's uh, actually it's not a proper electric guitar. It's a semi acoustic guitar. Okay. Uh, but uh, the shape, because the, the alien shape, uh, people think uh, uh, it's a uh, well, it's a death metal guitar. But actually, uh, conceptually, it's a jazz guitar. No, despite of the strange shape, um, and that maybe is my uh, my special, my most special instrument. Then for the others, uh, I I change my mind a lot. Uh, sometimes there is a, a guitar, sometimes another. Sometimes I don't play guitar for some months, but I play just the Chapman stick. Uh, it depends on the on the mood of the period because my main point is the music, not the instrument. Now. Yeah. The instrument, uh, because of its name, for me, is just an instrument. It's just uh, like a screwdriver or a, or a, or a pen or, uh, or whatever. It's just an instrument to things that to make the music being done. No? And you have a bass that is fretless. Yes, also yeah. that. Why did you I choose don't... the fretless bass? Oh, because I am a huge fan of Steve DiGiorgio. It, <laughs> since it forever, makes sense. <laughs> since for since when I <laughs> saw him, uh, maybe it was in Sadus. Uh, also before that, before becoming famous with human. Uh, but after that, really, the the, the sound of the fretless bass uh, just uh, blows me out. So uh, when I could find uh, when I could found a left-handed bass, because my main problem is that I am left-handed. Okay. So not all the instruments are available. And maybe that's uh, a good thing for my bank account because otherwise <laughs> I think I burn out all my savings for uh, instruments. And uh, well, I could find a German brand that was, uh, was selling it uh, and uh, well, I bought it and I like it. It's one of also my favorite instruments. Yeah. And what about the Chapman stick? How, how did you learn about uh, about it? Oh, well, I discovered it uh, on the internet. Just uh, I was looking for, for multi-string guitar that are always my passion. And in a video, I found this strange uh, object with uh, 12 strings. And I say, oh, what is that? I must have it. <laughs> and uh, well, uh, when I could afford it, I bought one, which is very difficult to buy one because uh, it's a family-run company that uh, produces uh, the, okay. the instruments and um, well they have uh, heaps of orders and they are not able to fulfill them all so there is a queue a waiting queue that is lasting years and uh, well I was lucky to find uh, a ready to buy one from the Italian importer so I get it it was about well 10 or 15 years 15 years ago maybe and uh, it was a big discovery because uh, it's like a portable piano. It's a, I ought to say, it's a, it's a mix of my favorite instrument. In one thing, you find the characteristics of guitar, bass, and piano. And uh, with that, I played uh, my latest live appearances. Well, I said that I'm not playing live since uh, about 10 years, but I was talking about guitar. With the Chapman stick, uh, I played uh, during the years live as a solo artist. I played uh, for uh, in, in public for like busker, okay. or um, or I played for uh, painters at uh, exhibitions. So the exhibitions of pictures, cool. uh, there is uh, myself uh, as a living soundtrack, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, that's a really valuable experience. Uh, yeah. I also played the instrument, an instrument alone. And uh, well, uh, among the other things, I'm also writing music for this instrument. I hope to be to have it released uh, the next year. 
Okay, nice. And the, this instrument, you you use the tapping technique. Yes. Am I right? Yeah. It's it's correct. It's a sort of tapping. I mean, it's tapping because it's not plucked. You don't use any pick. Yeah. It's a bit different from the guitar tapping because of the movements of the fingers. But yes, you can call it tapping. Yeah. I have a question about the bass. Uh, yes. How do you play the bass? I mean, do you use the pick or if you use finger? Oh, just fingers, just fingers. Okay. So the, uh, the, I think that the, the best, the, best the, must be, the classical must be way playing. and the, yes. the best way. <laughs> yes, yes. I think that bass must be played with fingers because I, I think that also the sound is different and also the the, the greatest bassist uh, always play, play with finger. fingers. Yes, yeah. they do from the yeah. from the early years. Uh, through the modern yeah. ones, everybody is using. I I completely agree with you about uh, about this. <laughs> And yeah. sometimes I'm scared to say my opinion because there are in the in the metal world there are a lot of best players that use just the mm -hmm. beat. So then is <laughs> I'm oh, I am no, you're... conflict uh, about uh, can I say that the bass should be played with finger? But then I I also understand that there are certain uh, maybe music certain songs that may may be complex to play with the with with fingers mm. only oh. then it, yes, it, it depends on on the person uh, uh what what the background is also i totally i totally agree i couldn't see let me play bass with fingers <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then uh, of course if someone is uh, uh looking for a more uh let's say metallic sound yeah then the, the, the pick is the is the right thing and then you you can choose a different kind of pick also to get the different kind of yes, sounds that's absolutely correct for example megadeth uh, was a typical band with bass play with pick and lf song was playing that since since the beginning now there's no more with megadeth but the sound is that yeah but how did you get into metal music? Oh well, that's a good question. Oh, my father is was listening. He's listening to. I grown up uh, listening to Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, Uriah Heep, uh, Grand Funk Railroad, uh, and, and so on. My father is a big uh, vinyl, vinyl collector, so I grown up with that sound. Also, early Judas Priest uh, and so on. So having the the distorted guitar and things like that was in my ears since the, the since I was a child. Then uh, when I when I was about 10, 9, I don't remember exactly now, uh, my parents bought me a cassette, at uh, the time there was a cassette, with a, with a strange looking zombie that was shooting uh, something in a, a futuristic city that was uh, somewhere in time by Iron Maiden. And uh, well, I started from from there uh, to be passionate of metal. Then I met uh, very young the guys from Karnak and uh, well, I was 15, I was already playing death metal on stages. <laughs> okay. And, yeah, I was very young, but yeah. my, teenage, my teen years was spent playing death metal on stage. Yeah, so you, you felt the metal like immediately pretty yeah. much. Yes, yes. Yeah, and it it was good that uh, your parents were into heavier yes. music, let's say. Uh -huh. So you you got that uh, the that opportunity to find uh, metal music earlier. Yes, yes, to many people. Absolutely, it was a very great experience. I think yeah. no no other music give that that kind of experience. I also listen. Uh, to almost everything from rap to pop to classic. Uh, I'm not a, mm, I have to say, I'm not a old school metal guy. Yeah, uh, you're not is, minded. Yes, yes, metal is, well, the main part of my musical background for sure, but I really like uh, also everything else because there is always something interesting to learn. True, true, that's true. And for a musician, it's important to be open minded because you get uh, inspiration from all around so not yeah. if you listen just uh, to one thing 
you don't get uh, other inspiration from something that maybe it's in interesting. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite metal band, if you have one? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a tough question. <laughs> uh, changes over time also that, but if I have to choose uh, one and the other ones to be dropped down from the rim of the piece, well, I can say, well, Slayer. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what's the best metal album ever? Oh, uh, that's I, I have a, I have a, a response for that. My favorite album of, of all times, of all music genres and whatever, is a Spheres from Pestilence. Okay. Because I think that album is totally crazy. I think you know, everybody knows that. It's quite old. It's 30 years now. But that album, uh, which uh, one of the first to intensively use the guitar scenes and jazz things, uh, it was, uh, in my opinion, something that is not even being done again, even if there are a lot of modern uh, uh, music. Yeah. Uh, it's light years ahead still now. You have that mix of that metal, jazz, and strange sound, which is, is actually what I would like to do. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, a, it's, a, it's like a listening to a dream come true for me. So that it's a, maybe my favorite album of all times. Yeah. And uh, talking about live music, mm -hmm. what what is the best uh, geek that you uh, that you have ever seen? Oh well, I can say every gig from King Diamond. Okay. I have seen him many many times, and uh, also with the with the tours with the latest Merciful Fate reunion, and uh, he is really the king for. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, is not just the name, but uh, effectively he's a king. Uh, his voice is uh, not of this earth. He's becoming even better during the years. Not like all the other singers which are losing their voice because of their age. It maybe is better. It's really a dangerous meeting or <laughs> something <laughs> like that he says in the songs. Uh, and uh, well, his voice is becoming better. And uh, the atmosphere is a way of hitting the stage is unique so yeah. it probably gives me goosebumps when i yeah yeah that's yeah. cool i never seen them live so i think i i have to put down on the list something to say i have a oh. lot of bands that i want to see live but it's not that easy <laughs> because uh, uh where i live uh, there are oh. not big geeks so oh, okay. I have always to go to, if I have to go to see a big gig, is Helsinki or Tampere. And uh, yeah, it's always about money. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, but, I'm quite lucky to, to live near the border of Slovenia. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, uh, when, when I was in Trieste, I was uh, yeah. going, well, quite a lot of time to Ljubljana to see okay. gigs. So, oh, me too, yes. I also play I there, understand but... you. <laughs> yeah. So, Gabriele, let's go to the question for from a person on Facebook. Tony mm -hmm. Dervonen asked, I li wrote, I listened to some of your songs, Eight Strings, wow. So how much has uh, Tony McAlpine influenced your playing? At least I hear some influences from McAlpine. Oh wow, that's a that's a great uh, consideration. I never thought about. I know Tony McAlpine is one of the greatest shredders of the eighties, uh, and it's really an inspiration for everybody that is playing guitar at a certain at a certain level. Well, I never thought about uh, uh, really having that kind of inspiration but uh, well if somebody hears uh, that in my music wow i am really proud of it uh, my well my main inspiration for guitar playing are from maybe alan holsworth or uh, frank zappa robert fripp uh, all these guitar guitar players from the 70s maybe uh, yeah yeah okay there were not other questions from People, mm -hmm. but let's go to the jar of uh, random oh, topics wow. and let's see what okay. we get as first topic. 
So the first is uh, drinks. Uh, so drinks. <laughs> what wow. is your favorite drink? Oh, well, for sure, beer, like every <laughs> metal guys out there. Uh, well, I'm not a drinking, drink, a good drinker. Uh, I used to be like that maybe in the past years, but uh, I have to leave it apart for health reasons. But uh, when there is a good beer, I really like to do, uh, to drink it. I was in Dublin maybe one month ago. And uh, well, Guinness was really the choice. <laughs> yeah. I love what's, it. What's your favorite beer or the kind of beer that you prefer to drink? Oh, well, for sure, Guinness is my favorite. But uh, generally speaking, I love the the British beers. So not so much uh, gas inside, uh, not so much foam on the top. I do prefer uh, German beers uh, over uh, Belgian or uh, Bavarian. Um, in Italy, well, I like Moretti a lot uh, and Peroni. But for yeah. sure, I don't like the industrial beers like Heineken or, uh, or whatever. I don't like them. Uh, one of my favorite beers was the London Pride when I was in England. Uh, well... Maybe that that kind of beer. Yeah, I'm quite uh, picky when it's oh, drinks, wow. and uh, um, yeah, I if I'm I'm outside and I have to go to an alcoholic uh, mm -hmm. drink, I will choose always, almost always beer over mm -hmm. other things, uh, but I like something that is more light. Or that the taste is, um, how to say, soft. Uh, mm. And I, I, I like that there is uh, a lot of... Uh, oh, gosh. You just told that you don't like that there is a lot of foam. A lot, I oh, okay. like that there is a lot of foam. But, oh, okay. of course, it depends if the beer... Because uh, there is also the art of drug the beer. Yes, and, yes. Uh, I like to go to those places where they are able. Unfortunately, in this place where I live, uh -huh. th th they are lacking of it because uh, uh, let's say that the F Finnish people uh, are more about uh, getting the drink fast than than getting oh. the drink in the drug drug in the right way, okay. uh, uh, because. It can take, for example, there are some uh, English beer that you have mm -hmm. to wait, uh, like also ten minutes before to enjoy the beer because oh, yes, sure. take the their time. So here it's more difficult to get a, a bartender that is able to mm. to serve the beer in the right way, and and that oh, wow. that. That that bothered me a bit, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I understand. But I try to survive. <laughs> oh, okay. When when I'm somewhere where they are able to drag the the beer in the right way, mm -hmm. I'm so happy and I really enjoy. But I'm going I'm going more to Pilsner, uh, Lager, okay. Um, okay, some Weizen, okay, but other. I'm I'm not into other right. Uh -huh. it's, not it's not the really stars. But also when you talk about the Heineken thing, um, Heineken, mm. yeah, it's okay, but it's it's not my first choice. Oh, and okay. the the thing is that Heineken and Carlsberg, mm. they just competing uh, from which of them are buying more small smaller brand. Uh, for example, oh. when you said about uh, uh, Moretti, yes, uh, Heineken is the owner. Now oh, I, don't, wow. I don't, I don't remember when uh, when it happened, but yeah, they huh? they are buying everything, oh, okay. and, and yeah, I don't know. It's it's a bit sad, in my opinion, huh? because then then the the beer, the name, uh, is missing the the, the story if it's. Uh -huh. Yes, I, I agree. But uh, yeah, but I try always to taste from other, maybe more small 
brewery. So I mm. remember years ago, uh, I was on holiday in Trieste and uh, I was in a bar and I was like, oh, let's try this beer. And it was a Citta Vecchia. Uh -huh. That is a beer from Trieste. And then I put the a story on Instagram and I tag Citta Vecchia Brewery. Mm -hmm. And uh, they contact me and ask if we were interested to to go and see the the brewery. And uh, oh, wow. and we went there. We we taste the beers. It was really cool. Then we both we both um, stuff, of course, beers and other 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 souvenirs. Oh wow! Great. <laughs> and uh, it 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 was a really nice experience. Oh, yeah, nice, nice, nice people for a, for a small brewery. It's very kind people. Yeah, and they came to take us from the uh, center of Trieste to the place uh, because the place is uh, um, close to Borgo Grotta Gigante. Oh, okay. Yeah, it it was a it was really nice of them, and it was a great experience, and it was nice to yeah. taste different beer. Even if I'm if I am picky, I taste everything that they had, and they have several. So I suggest you to try them oh, well, if, you have, if you haven't yet. Yeah. Okay. And thanks for the suggestion. I will. I You're am welcome. often in Trieste, so why not? You can find also in uh, in supermarkets. So they they are uh -huh. selling nowadays. They okay. are different oh. i don't know how many were the five different kind of beer i'm not sure but yeah <laughs> you will yeah, see okay. there is well. any drink that you don't like that you are like i'm not going to drink it oh wow always speaking about alcoholic stuff I suppose. or in, ge in general general uh well, well. There is, there is a, I have to think, <laughs> well, maybe, well, I'm not, uh, I'm not so much a wine person, but I drink wine sometimes. I don't like uh, maybe the cocktails that you see in the, in the bars for, uh, uh, I don't know the English words in Italian, we say figetteria, but I don't know yeah. the English word for that, but uh the classic uh, mid class people that drinks uh, cocktails uh, uh, telling what they do and what they don't uh, so maybe with the gin with the colored drinks things, i don't know with the, the ones yeah. that you will find on the beach with the, with the black uh, uh, yeah uh, yeah so like soccer <laughs> but no <laughs> Well, maybe someone is uh, is going to write in the comments uh, if uh, got yeah, the, but, the one uh, yeah. the one the one that is like this and you yes exactly I don't remember the English <laughs> I'm, I'm, that, I I so. I have the word here but it's not coming out so whatever uh, yes but uh, that, that kind of cocktails is not for me for the rest uh, yes I like almost everything I love Pelinkovets and uh, yeah. which is typical from our zone and. Uh, uh, yes, that's it. I am quite. Uh, I like to try everything. Yeah. yeah. What about the morning uh, drink? Do mm. you drink coffee or are you more a tea person? Oh, more a tea person. I drink yeah. uh, green tea at the morning. Okay. I also uh, I don't stop. like coffee, and uh, coming from Trieste oh. is like a huge thing that I don't drink coffee, ah, yes. <laughs> but. <laughs> Yeah, I I like uh, I like tea and uh, actually I'm I'm picky. I became picky picky also on the tea. On the tea. Yeah, because I I don't like to add nothing. So there is just the tea and the water, nothing else. Yes. And I like I the the tasty um, tasty soft, uh, maybe a mm. bit smoky. Oh yeah, that's good. A, I totally but, agree with you. Yeah, so I, I like uh, yeah all the classical uh, earth grey, green uh -huh. tea, uh, black tea. But then uh -huh. if if I if I have to buy, I like uh, from Twine, is Twining's. Twinings. Yeah, Twining's the um, Prince of Welsh. Ah, it's okay. I know, I know it. And then uh, I like from another English brand. 
it's a puka and uh, I like the licorice or, or licorice mint. Oh, it's, wow. it's really good because it's uh, it has the, the, the right test. It's not too much of uh, mm -hmm. licorice or too much of mint uh, or uh, there is not a bitter inside. It's it's perfect. <laughs> wow. Oh, yes, and uh, also I don't use uh, anything beside water with the yeah. Uh, I don't like nothing inside. No sugar, no milk, no whatever. Just the tea. Yeah. Because I like the taste. Yes. Yeah. True. It's it's important. Yeah. Yeah. But let's go and pick another 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 topic okay. because we we went uh, quite uh, quite long with drinks. <laughs> I, <laughs> okay. I could talk about drinks uh, all the time, but yeah, let's let's get on. Okay, so we got the uh, series. Uh, so do you like to watch uh, Netflix or uh, oh, something uh, else? Well, I don't use Netflix, but I, um, I'm always a lot on, Am on Amazon. Okay, Amazon. They have the Amazon Prime video. Uh, well, I'm not a serious fanatic, actually. Uh, Sometimes uh, when I just go through the menu, I find something that is, is inspiring and uh, I, I I take it, but I'm not a fanatic about series. The latest okay. one that I saw was uh, The Tick, which is uh, about a superhero, a stupid superhero, quite comic. They've written as a, as a tick that uh, uh, it, it was really funny, like a sort of comedian. Uh, yeah. It was maybe two seasons of uh, 20 episodes each. It was by the, the history of this uh, strange superhero. It was very, very funny. Um, What's your favorite uh, series of all time? Oh, well, uh, can we include the series uh, uh, from the old times, from the 70s? Of like course, of course, from, from okay. whatever time. Oh, oh, so my favorite one is Automan. Okay. If yeah. you remember that, I'm. Yeah. I was watching that in the in the eighties was called the more telefilm than not series, because maybe the serial is a, just a, a big movie um, split in in episode, yeah. but the 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 early things like Star Trek or whatever there is not a, a single story; they are isolated episodes. Yeah. Which is slightly different from the concept of series, I think. Maybe one that we could say is almost a series, but it's very old. It's uh, Spazio 1999, Space uh, 1999. Uh, I also love it. I, generally speaking, I love uh, science fiction and uh, that kind of topics. So something that is not uh, pure reality. I don't like series that just depicts uh, like... Uh, uh, news or whatever, right? just yeah. crazy things. The craziest, the better. Yeah, yeah. When it comes to series or telefilm, as you want to mm -hmm. to think about them, uh, I normally choose randomly. Uh, the last one that I watched the 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 last the part three or whatever is the. Yeah, the season, season three that mm -hmm. that's the, uh it's a norwegian one uh, called ragnarok so it's about mm. the thor yeah the name yeah the, yeah, name the is meaningful uh but it's in a um modern version modern, mm -hmm. modern key, key uh the final was disappointing I'm not going to tell the final if someone uh, is watching the, that series right now. Okay, no um, So, but it was disappointing because it was uh, good mm -hmm. and it was in Norwegian. So I had just the uh, subtitles in uh, Finnish and uh, I was, uh, or did I put in English? I don't know. There were the subtitles. And and then there was everything was in Norwegian, but I think they had, they have also in English uh, the the series, but I I don't know, and it it was interesting, but normally I'm more into easy going 
things, mm. uh, things that you don't have to think too much. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Maybe, yeah. maybe co comedy and so on. I, mm -hmm. I don't remember if now it's on uh, Prime or uh, HBO because we have all, we have all Netflix, HBO, and uh, mm -hmm. Prime. Um, so oh, well. <laughs> I don't, re well, I don't remember well. where they are, but there is one. Uh, uh, call uh, what we do in the dark, and it's about. Oh, okay, movie. yes, I, do I you know, know that. Do you know that? Yeah, I have seen the movie at the cinema. Okay, I I I I love that because it's so so fun and. Uh, yeah, the, I've you, seen you... the movie at the science fiction festival in Trieste. Okay, it's uh, it's it's really fun. I I I like uh, the the comedy that they put into mm -hmm. those vampires and yeah they, so, yes i know i know it's very funny yeah so if someone didn't didn't see this we suggest you to see this <laughs> totally do, do it's very fun yeah <laughs> so it's it's great but now let's put the jar away and mm -hmm. uh, let's talk of about the most important topic on this yeah. show and that is pizza oh wow yes wonderful so, i love it you love pizza i think yes i totally I do great what's your favorite pizza oh uh, the four season i don't know if it's proper translation but yeah, what yeah. Is i don't know if they, they call it four season in the rest of the world but it's my favorite yeah because and, it uh, does everything i also i use that as a test as a um, Test to see if the pizzeria is good. If they okay. make good quattro stagioni, I can imagine that the rest is good. Okay, that's a, that's a good idea how to to test if a pizzeria is good. Uh, where did you eat the best pizza ever? Oh, it was in Trieste, but not from Trieste. I mean, uh, there was a couple of times that there was the Neapolitan Pizza Festival just okay. along the sea. And there was, there was a lot of uh, pizza makers that came up from Naples and they were showcasing uh, how to make the actual uh, Neapolitan pizza. And uh, I went there just for pure curiosity. I had a simple margarita. And when I tasted, I started to cry because really I never, I never ate a pizza, a real pizza, okay. when, when I tried that. Because maybe everything is different. The 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 border, the the duff, the, the tomato, the cheese. It's like in a, we have a, an economic version of the pizza. When, when you go in the normal pizzeria. Uh, it was, well, if I could... Next level. It again. Uh, yes, next level. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And where did you eat the worst pizza? Oh, the worst. Oh. Oh, maybe... Maybe when I was in Birmingham, some pizza hut. Yeah. It's a... <laughs> It was uh, I was forced to do to, to try one, but uh, well, the name is Pizza Hut, but well, it's very difficult. They just call pizza whatever is made of bread and tomato. Yeah, and, Pizza Hut is a chain that is uh, pretty much yeah. everywhere, not in Italy. Huh. I don't know. Is it in Finland? Maybe in Helsinki, but not uh, not here um, where I live. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah. I, I can imagine what kind it's, of pizza they, they sell. <laughs> it's terrible. Also in the United States, uh, I found pizza with ketchup instead of tomato, uh, with uh, a sort of, where the, the base uh, is uh, sank in a sort of yellow oil. I don't know. It's they, they, made, they make very strange things. I don't know how they can eat that. Yeah, I I don't know. People people are weird, but uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was I was thinking yesterday I went to buy a pizza that is not uh, good as uh, pizza in Italy, mm -hmm. but 
it was fine. But then I was thinking that there were three ladies doing the pizzas. Mm. And I was I started to, to thought about that in Italy, there are only men that do pizza. Am I right? Mm. Have you ever seen any 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 woman as a pizzaiolo? No, actually no. <laughs> so I start to think about that and I, I never thought, but yesterday came yeah. in my mind, wait, in Italy there are only men that yeah. do the pizza. And, uh, and lately they are not Italian. Most of the pizzaiolos here, uh, I see Egyptians or, uh, or things like that. But no, sometimes they are also Italian, but yeah, women never. Yeah, it's it's something really interesting. I was thinking how it comes. Why? Yeah. Huh. Okay, that uh there is this this thing that uh we always think about making food at least in Italy, making food as something that uh, women do. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the best cook in the world, they are all male. Yeah, the if you see the, the master chef uh, uh, the, the 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 main characters are all male. Yeah, so it's really yeah. interesting. Uh, I I should do some researchers. Research. Yeah, it's quite strange yeah. because yeah. Uh, yeah. why not? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 interesting. If someone, yeah. uh, I I want to know from other people around the world how it works in their country uh, the pizza maker people are all males or there are also lady uh, so i hope that someone has were in the comments <laughs> but oh uh, you see <laughs> yeah i'm curious to know yeah let, let, let's see what they will say but yeah. uh, uh there is the most important question oh, wow <laughs> does pineapple belong to pizza no, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> no. It's like ketchup. It's like no. I I try to imagine the taste, but I cannot match with the with the tomatoes because because there are two acid things, and one is sweet and one not. Also, if you put a tomato and a pineapple beside outside the pizza, the problem is not the pizza. The problem is the match. In my opinion, that the, the the match between the tomato and the pineapple. Yeah. It's so terrible. do you think that a white pizza would work with pineapple then? Oh, wow. Good question. <laughs> well, maybe better, but uh, I don't know if I could eat uh, do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe it's, a, it's a little bit uh, less terrible. Yeah. That's it. But uh, uh, it remains the fact that uh, the, the pizza is salt while the, the pineapple is sweet. It is the same when I see pizza with uh, Nutella. So it's uh, unbearable. <laughs> but yeah. think about it's bread with Nutella on. So uh, Yes, bread with Nutella is great. But, so the pizza dough is the same. It's bread and then you put Nutella. <laughs> no. Don't you don't you think? Yes. Yes. <laughs> what yes, about what about the uh, French fries on the pizza? Oh, well, more or less, I can stand it. Uh, I I think of it as a more childish childish yeah. thing because the, it's for children. Yeah, to, to that's do. true. Even if a lot of adults eat it, oh, <laughs> at yes. least in Italy, it's it's a yeah. thing here. No one um, in Finland, no one thought about the uh, French well, fries on the pizza. It's too heavy, it's too carbohydrates in the same thing. Yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that the once I I took the the French fry pizza mm -hmm. when I was a teenager, but yeah. also French there fries are with Wurstel. Yeah. Also, there I'm. I'm picky also on that on pizza. Oh, I understand. You are. You are right on that. I'm always picky about food, but oh I, yeah, but you 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 do right. You yeah, do and I I always take the same pizza. Always the same. Ah, which or one? Nice. If I'm in Italy, it's uh, margherita, più stracchino, 
and ol olives. Ah, wow. But uh, when I'm here, I'm going with uh, margarita. Simple, easy. The, okay. the one that, that should be... The, the most... real one, the real thing. Yeah, yeah, that should be easy to make. But mm -hmm. yeah, work in progress in Finland. There are actually... Oh, really? I, ca I cannot talk about all Finland because I have never been uh, everywhere eating pizza. Maybe I should do a tour... <laughs> Mm -hmm. and go in different place and eat pizza and taste but uh, uh in, in helsinki there are uh, uh italian pizzeria there is really one uh, that the name is uh, via tribunali mm -hmm. and it's good yeah that that was uh super approved uh but oh, wow. in pori uh the, there are Two, uh, I have to go to one pizzeria because everybody told me that it's good, so I have to go and taste at some point. But uh, for the moment, uh, I'm staying with Torget and Dante's. Yeah, hmm. even if uh, it's not, there is something in the tomato sauce, but I don't know what what they put. They put something more there hmm. that just take off points to be the, 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 the one okay I understood I have I have to figure out what what is it that that makes it ah, uh, I, they, I don't know what but is in the tomato sauce something they, they, they will use uh, I don't know to say the concentrato di pomodoro maybe I don't, I don't I don't it's it's not that I think it's uh, it's more that there is the sauce but they put some herbs Ah, okay. So that that's uh, the thing that uh, that is uh, mm. giving that that minus there. Okay, I understood. But I don't I don't know I don't know I I will do my researches maybe on oh. I will ask what do you put. <laughs> <laughs> but they say at the end the secret of the pizza is the base materials. Yeah. And they are good. Less is better. Less is better and. The best quality in every single uh, ingredient. Yeah, true. But uh, we have the, at the end of this interview. Okay. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to have you as guest. You're welcome. And Thanks would you like to, you. to say something to people that are watching this interview? Oh, well, I would like, uh, if you like, if you want to hear uh, Golden Seed music, uh, you can hear them on the main streaming platform. You will find my music on uh, Spotify, on uh, Apple Music, on Amazon, on YouTube, there is the official channel. If you like some merchandise on Amazon, you will find the t-shirts. I'm too short but to, <laughs> to stay in the, in the camera, but if you go on Amazon and look for Golden Seed, you will find all the merchandise. At the moment, there are no physical copies because I don't have so much request. But if you uh, in, are interested, please uh, drop me a message. When I get uh, a sufficient number of requests, I can think about printing physical copies. So if anybody is interested, uh, please contact me. And uh, thanks, everybody who is watching this channel. Thanks, uh, Christina, and everybody who has the, the patience to hear all, all this stuff. Thank you. Thank you.